couple of songs for you guys. Well, by the way, let me just do a proper introduction. Sorry, I was just so in a hurry. My name is Matteo Sassato, all the way from Brazil to Germany. So nice to be here. Thank you so much. I mean, this is my first time at Guitar Summit. I'm having a great time here. And yeah, super excited to watch amazing other players. Um, I'll be playing with Martin Miller tonight, which is gonna be cool. If you guys like some prints, be ready for it. And yeah, um, you know, I'll be playing a couple of songs for you guys today on this workshop. And if you have some questions, I'll be open to share a little bit of you know what I know uh, to you. And yeah, let's have some fun.
Thank you so much. Still warming up. I'm serious. It's called Maria. Yeah. I wrote that song for. Not for my girl. Because uh, my, my fiance is called Maria, but that was before I met her. Uh, anyways, uh, I wrote that for a Gentrack Central thing. 
they wanted to do like a ballad, romantic thing. And I was like, okay, I got you. Anyways, do you guys have any questions? You guys want to talk about something or? I mean, I can just talk a little bit too, if you want. I see you there. I need you to speak very loud because we have so many more people than yesterday, so I feel good. How much do I practice every day? It all depends. I try to do it every, at least two hours a day. Sometimes I can't, especially like when you travel all the way from Brazil to Germany, for example, and then you have to deal with jet lag, which I'm, I'm so bad at it. But I, I try to, you know, spend some time with my guitar, you know, I would say two hours minimal. Four hours would be ideal. I mean, I'm saying for now. I'm 29, so it would be the best for me if I could, you know, spend at least four hours a day. But if I can make it happen, I try to make it at least two. If I can't do two, I'll try to be you know, uh, the, uh, as much as I can to be focused. If I only have 30 minutes, I turn my phone off. This is something so essential nowadays. Turn your phone off whenever you try to practice your guitar. Oh, but Guitar Pro is here, Pro Tools, Logic. I get it, but back in the days, we didn't have Pro Tools, we didn't have Guitar Pro and the computer. We were just practicing on, you know, maybe having a click, a metronome with us. So that's what I try to do right now. I try to, you know, stay away from my phone, anything electronic. I actually bought a, um, a click, like a very like analog click that goes like uh, like this, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I would say two to four. Back in the days when I was 16, 15, I was probably practicing for like eight hours a day, which was really nice. I miss those days. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Matteo Mancuso practiced 24 hours a day. My goodness. Yeah, you guys know Matteo Mancuso, right? The hottest kid in the guitar world right now. Yeah. By the way, you have such a beautiful name, you know? Just, just letting you know. Um, yeah, so I would say now, how old are you? You're 22? You should be practicing at least four hours a day, brother. No, I'm just kidding. No, but um, yeah, it's important because, I mean, the older I get, I realize that if I don't practice for one day, the next day, I feel like, what is this? You know, it definitely, I, there's some weird thing going. I don't know, it's probably my brain getting, getting, I don't know, tired. But yeah, two to four. Yo, all the way in the back. I do. <laughs> Sorry, you can you, you can you can tell it, right? <laughs> Playing a strat, yeah. Um, I was telling this yesterday. The way how I, how I uh, got to know of the old school heroes was kind of the other way around. So I first start listening to the Brazilian guitar players. There was a really nice uh, era in Brazil in the 80s, 90s. And so I would start listening to these guys and then listening to them got me into the big heroes of, you know, that was around 2000s or something. Uh, so this is when I found out, after listening to my, the Brazilian heroes, I got to 
meet Eric Johnson, I mean, meet to listen to Eric Johnson, Petrucci, Steve Vai, Satriani, which was probably like the five pillars of, you know. And then I, find, I found out about John Mayer a couple of years later. So I found John Mayer and Frusciante. Those two guys were like big influences to me. And then I ended up knowing about, oh, there's this guy, Steve Ray. Dang it, he's amazing. And then, oh, there's this guy that I used to see in just pictures and Pinterest, Jimi Hendrix. So it was the other, other way around, which was kind of weird to me, but now I understand. It makes total sense why Jimmy was Jimmy, you know. I, I, I read one of his books. I mean, someone wrote it for him. That guy's special, you know. And yeah, Hendrix is a big hero for me. But I would say the guy that really changed my way of playing from the shred wannabe festus, festus as possible to like, okay, cool, we can play some melodies and do things different with the two Johns, Frusciante and John Mayer. I think these two guys were like, okay, change the game for me. But yeah, any more questions? You in the black, black shirt, yeah. My daily practice. This is some, okay, how do I approach improvisation? It's been a little while, to be honest. Impro, like, was something that I was, and I am not afraid to say that, it's definitely not my cup of tea. Yeah. Of course, I like to jam with people and stuff, but when I, when I see, like, the improvisation, like, the free, spontaneous thing, I try to look up for Prince or Frusciante. That's why I love the Chili Peppers, because every show, every concert they have, it's a different intro, every show. And the fact that I'm not, I mean, I love jazz, but I never got into like the jazz playing, and I know jazz is all about impro. You just play over chord changes and things like that. So normally what I would do when I'm feeling to, okay, let, let me start messing around with different phra phrasings and chord progressions playing over changes and stuff. I'll probably just grab a, a beat from Pro Tools, whatever, Logic. And then I just start messing around with phrasing first. And then I start adding like, you know, different chord changes in. <laughs> As I have the beat, I just like. something I need to work a little more like improvisations and of course I think like the most important thing when it comes to feeling that kind of improvisation sense is to play with other people you know if you're not if your best friend is not a drummer something's probably wrong no I'm just kidding but, <laughs> but you gotta you gotta have you gotta have a drummer alongside with you because that definitely increases your timing skills, your, you know, just your the sense of dynamics. I think this is really important. Uh, oh, let's do a last question, and then if you guys want, I could play a last song. That's okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how important were your studies in the States for the chord progressions that you made? They seem to be very um, difficult and very nice also, the same. 
uh, could you compose these four progressions before the studies in the US or were they relevant for your composition work? I think everything helped, you know. Thankfully, Brazil is a very well known country, at, at least it was back in the days, for like the, the richness of musicality, musicianship, because we play like the bossa nova, has so many chords. <laughs> So all that kind of like, I don't know how to say it, but, um, but that helped me a lot, you know, getting to know a little bit of like the church community in America, you know, like the R&B, you know, the feel of it, it changes us a lot. But honestly, you mentioned about my songs and being like difficult or something, but they're actually not, it's pretty much more like inversions. Like I love this G major chord, I mean, yeah, G major. People know we play like this, right? I just like... So, again, it's, it's the same. But I just... I just do a little, like, inversions kind of thing that I'll be talking in my master class at 4.30, I think. But um, yeah, it definitely helped a lot. Country music was kind of cool for me to get to know. We were talking about Brad Paisley yesterday, so. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. I'll be playing a last song, if that's okay. And um, yeah, super excited to be here. You guys are amazing. And yeah, let's have some fun.
Thank you so much, guys. God bless you.